Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Yeah. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a couple of clips from William Hornby. In one of the clips, his friend is telling him how happy they are since they've lost weight, and he has to remind them that it's very likely that their diet will fail. 97% of diets fail, he tells them. Such an uplifting and supportive friend. And in the other clip, he says, don't congratulate your partner's weight loss, because you don't know how they lost weight. We're also going to be taking a look at a bonus clip where somebody says, people only started wanting to date me when I lost weight. Before we proceed, please click the like button so that I may apply comb to mustache. I love it when people compliment me on my weight loss. It makes me feel so good. Looks like we're back to the robes. Have you considered how you're gonna feel when you gain it back? When? Sorry, I'm not gaining it back. Sorry, I, I can say if, if you prefer, because you're right, there's a chance that you don't. Exactly. But your chances are really low according what the hell? Somebody just got done losing weight and the first thing you say to them is, well, I'm glad that you're happy now. How are you going to feel when you gain it back? What the hell? Bro, you are the least supportive friend ever. Dude, I'm so proud of myself. I just lost all this weight. This is awesome. You're going to gain it back though. What? I mean, maybe uh, one day, but uh, I'm very happy that I lost it to begin with. That's pretty impressive, right? No, you will gain it back. <laughs> what are you even doing? <laughs> Why are you even feeling good about yourself and feeling accomplished? You will gain it back! You can't just be supportive and happy for your friends? Damn, bro. ...to over half a century of peer-reviewed research that suggests that your chance... Dude, enough, okay? This is coming off real bitter and jealous, bro. Chances of being able to maintain your weight loss are between 3 and 5 percent. First of all, you pulled all that out of your rear end. And secondly, why do you want to discourage me when I just lost the weight? This would be the last day of our friendship, honestly. It seems like your own mental issues are preventing you from being happy for anybody else at any given time. Like, happiness is just not allowed in our lives anymore. I don't know what happened to you, man. Wait, is that real? Yeah, and on top of that, our bodies fight. Wait, is that real? Yeah, so give up then. That's exactly what you're trying to encourage this person to do. Weight loss is a survival mechanism, so your metabolic rate will likely go down and your natural set point will go up. Set point doesn't exist, but if it did, how would it go up from eating less food? That doesn't even make any sense. I'm intaking less calories, but my body gets bigger? Huh? I think that William is so riddled with personal issues that at this point he's just saying stuff that's nonsensical. Which means over a period of five years you will gain back all of the weight. Or more. Why? Why would I gain more weight when I was trying to lose weight? Well, statistically, everybody else did. First of all, those are nonsense statistics. And statistically, a lot of people are morons, too. So, 100% of people that don't try to do something will fail. How about that statistic? As two-thirds of people do. Aren't you supposed to be pro-fat people or something? Why are you saying that like that's a problem? Oh, don't be mistaken. I'm pro-fat people. I'm pro any person and anybody, actually. And I um, I don't think so. You seem to be anti-fitness and anti-health. This person wanted to lose weight for their health to feel better and all this, and you start reprimanding them and telling them that they're going to fail. So I don't think you're pro all bodies. It's really weird that you want everybody to be obese. I think we all should be, but this isn't about that. This is about you and the long-term effects that this could have on your mental health. What about my physical health? My mental health? So I should throw away my physical health, get diabetes, stroke, heart attacks, have all this excess adipose weighing me down for the benefit of my mental health. How would it benefit my mental health to be immobile? You do realize that physical health and mental health go hand in hand, right? It's been shown that exercise helps depression as well as your mental state in general. How does it help my mental health to just let my body go to total crap? When I can't get up off this couch, then I'll feel real good. How do you mean that? Well, if you gain the weight back as 95 to 97% of people do, how are you going to feel when all of the compliments go away? I get what? So your argument here is don't enjoy compliments that people give you because at some point those compliments will go away. I don't know. What is this argument? This is stupid. I guess that would feel kind of bad. Okay, so your argument is that I should never try to lose weight because one day I will gain it back and then people will stop giving me compliments and I will feel bad. That is the dumbest argument I have literally ever heard for anything in my entire life. 
not even fat acceptance related. That's just the dumbest argument I've ever heard. Don't ever try to win at anything because you might lose and then you'll feel bad. That's actually a more valid argument than what you just said. People will stop giving you compliments like F Things are just getting just so weird now, bro. It's just getting so weird. Exactly. Welcoming compliments on your weight loss, no matter how it happened, is likely setting you up to feel worse about your body in the future. Dude, what? Way worse than you ever felt about it before you initially lost weight. I never thought about it that way. Yeah, because it's stupid. That's why I didn't think about it that way. Don't ever succeed, because one day you might stop succeeding, and then people will stop praising you for your previous success. <gasps> what will I do then? I like how the argument wasn't even that, like, you'll stop succeeding one day. It was that you'll stop receiving praise one day. Who gives a sh**? I don't care if I stop receiving praise. What am I, a stupid baby? Who is this video for? We all deserve better than participation in social anti-fatness. Be a part of the solution and not a complicit or active part of the problem. No. <laughs> You be a part of the solution and quit trying to stop everybody else from succeeding because it's making your butt hurt or whatever your problem is. Next. All right, he's going to read this comment. I think it's pretty easy to tell whether someone you know lost weight due to an ED or a healthy manner, lol. Oh, is it? Please do tell. Well, if you've watched them be goal-oriented and eat healthy and slim down, I think it's okay to compliment those people. What? You can't compliment anybody ever. How dare you? I just feel like sometimes people work hard and it's okay to recognize those accomplishments and give them a compliment, you know? To be a nice person. You do! You want to compliment people and make them feel good because of their accomplishments. <laughs> That's real nice. By the way, what's that on your shirt? Yeah, I just feel like sometimes it's important to show your support to people. Let them know that you care. Wait, what? What's that on my shirt? <laughs> I don't know. Why well, not just slowly look down at it? Uh, don't you ever show anybody any type of support ever. They probably lost all that weight smoking crack. You don't know. Ah, all right, man, I won't compliment anybody. Starting to scare me, William. Actually, that is not the truth, Ellen. How dare you call me Ellen? Unless you are actively monitoring what they're eating and how they're exercising and other activities. Why? Why would I monitor another human being like that? I only care in passing, okay? The only way to know your friends is to monitor them 24-7 and you don't know how they lost the weight and you all the to do. Calm down, okay? But did you monitor them when they were in the bathroom? Like, no, no, I didn't. God. Did you ever consider that the blah, blah, blah? No, no, I didn't. No, I did not. And I'm not going to. Thank you. Call me Ellen, son of a bitch. <laughs> don't you dare call me Ellen. These are engaging in 24-7 you do not know how they're losing uh, weight. Um, yes, I do. How? Because you trust them? Unfortunately, when people aren't- <laughs> How? Because you trust them? What are you, a moron? You trust your friends? Your own friends? Actually, this is when your partner loses weight. Your own partner. We sleep in the same bed, okay? I think I know if this person is losing weight in a healthy way. I know it's possible to lie to somebody that you're in a relationship with. Sure. But I don't think that that's happening. Losing weight in a healthy way? They are not reliable narrators on how they are losing weight. Why would we automatically assume by default that people are doing everything in an unhealthy way? That's so unhinged, bro. And that's the best information you're getting on whether they're doing all right or not. Give your partner the benefit of the doubt. This isn't about your friends, like I said. This is about your partner. If your partner loses weight, don't congratulate their weight loss. Because even though you're sleeping in the same bed, they might have done it in an unhealthy way. Okay, but if they were my partner, for example, surely I'd know. We're no, you wouldn't. Uh-uh. When you were in the bathroom taking a dump, they snuck off somewhere and restricted or something. Sleeping in the same bed. Yeah, emphasis on the sleeping part. You- What? So you're saying I should not sleep when I'm in my bed with my partner. I should monitor them all throughout the night to make sure they're not losing weight in an unhealthy way. I don't know what they do while you're asleep. Okay, so yes, I need to stop sleeping from now on so I can monitor them 24-7. I mean, would they really lie to me? Apparently, everybody lies to William 24-7. <laughs> he accuses everyone in his life of lying. You're like, hey, William, I lost a pound. He's like, did you do it in an unhealthy way? 
Be like, hey, William, I got a new job. He's like, did you cheat on the test to get the job? Like, hey, William, I'm driving to the store to get some groceries. Were you speeding in the car on the way there? Like, ah, take it easy, man. God. Well, people who struggle with eating are usually secretive about it due to unnecessary shame. To assume that everybody is losing weight in an unhealthy way is pretty silly when they are like a hundred times more likely to be obese and gaining weight in an unhealthy way. The thing that is far more likely to end your life prematurely, obesity, we care nothing about. Wow, okay, I guess you're right. Can you imagine withholding praise from your partner, the person that you're with, because of all this wacky nonsense right here? dude that's a good way to end up single <laughs> you're just like being a jerk because of all your own weird perceptions about things no compliments on weight loss going forward trust me i am there's no reason for you to comment on anybody's weight ever unless i feel like it then i will i'm a big boy dang it we all need to unlearn that nagging part of us that is like oh i must comment on no you don't you just don't all right, so that was completely insane. William says, don't compliment your partner's weight loss because you don't know how they lost weight. Apparently, while you were asleep, they were getting up in the middle of the night and sneaking off to lose weight in an unhealthy manner. <laughs> you know how it goes, that old story. You catch your boyfriend sneaking off in the middle of the night and you're like, are you cheating on me? And he's like, no, I was going to the gym. <laughs> I'm not saying it's funny or fun. Any of the behaviors that people engage in. I'm just saying it's silly to act like people are sneaking off in the middle of the night to do that. Next. Not skinny, I can't give that to them. So they don't take the time. So I have my two cents. I experienced that moment where I was really head over heels for my housemates. This is when I was in a larger body. You've heard from her before and I love her accent. And I thought he liked me. A person in the world. A person in the world person in the world sorry two and i made a move and he rejected me oh that's the worst huh and i remember being really hurt and confused because it was, it was i believed it was fairly clear he liked me that's why the whole making a move thing is weird right like you're getting along with somebody you think there's some kind of chemistry and then they make a move on you like you just try to kiss me or whatever i don't know I don't know, I've never misread the room like that, right? Where we're talking like, hey, yeah, ha, ha, that's funny or whatever. And then I'm like, I think I could kiss her right now. <laughs> I've never done that. You're like, ha, ha, you like that joke, huh? That was pretty funny, huh? You wanna, you wanna make out a little bit or? Oh, wait, should, I, should I have just gone in like? <laughs> like, ah, what are you doing? I'm just wondering what the conversation was like leading up to that. And if you're making a move, was you like, I'm trying to go in for that or whatever you guys are like having a really good co what kind of conversation leads to that i just want to know dude i just want to know i'm i'm just weird i'm weird about the little details like that hey jan can you pass me that stapler really <laughs> i'm sorry man anyway some time passes and i end up losing a lot of weight on an extreme and very dangerous diet they always say that. Anytime somebody that's currently living in a larger body talks about the past when they were thinner, they always did it in an extreme and unhealthy way. Just so we're clear, it was very dangerous and stupid when I was at a healthy BMI. And he comes to me, he starts flirting with me, he tells me he really likes me, he tells me that he thinks I'm beautiful. And I was like, oh my God, I knew it. I knew you thought all this. <laughs> I knew it. I knew you thought I was hot. You were just screwing around before when I was a couple hundred pounds heavier. What do you mean I knew it? He's acting this way after you lost the weight. So there's no knew it. He wasn't attracted to you. And now he is because he wasn't attracted to obesity or whatever. And then the hindsight was, oh, hold on. I'm the same person. I Same personality, same humor, same hobbies, same... Um... Not to be mean here, but... All of that stuff is not anything to do with your physical appearance. You might be a wonderful person, have great hobbies, a great personality, you're hilarious or whatever, but if I'm not attracted to you physically, I'm not attracted to you physically. Let me ask you this, was this man also morbidly obese or obese or whatever the case may be? Because a lot of people in the fat acceptance movement are very confused when people aren't into larger people, but they're not into larger people at the same time. 
when they talk about my man so hot or whatever, it's always like a thin guy. I don't know, intelligence level, like I was the same person. Right, but physically you were not the same person, you were a whole different looking person. And we would be lying to ourselves if we were to say that attraction is all just personality and how cool somebody is or whatever. Obviously there's a physical component to it. And if there's not, then why aren't you with a morbidly obese person? Patterson. But I was just in a thinner body and I realized that my worthiness of being someone's partner had increased tenfold because I was in a smaller body. Um, I'm very confused right now. You're acting like physical attraction does not exist and everybody was just being a jerk to you and now they accepted you. And that really hurt to know that this person who, you know, I lived with for a year, uh, I really, really liked and I thought knew me, he didn't, he didn't like me enough to see past my body. Right, to be in a relationship with somebody entails a physical aspect. So he may have loved your personality and this and that and everything, but he didn't want to have any sort of physical relationship with you because he wasn't attracted to your physical body. I'm not sure why I have to keep explaining this. And it was only when I was in a more societally acceptable body did he make a move. We don't need to keep externalizing all of our own personal problems. Society had nothing to do with this. And it's because I would have given him something to gain from that. Like to be on my arm would have been, you know, maybe a boost for his societal value as well, right? And it's, real, it's realizing that like, you know, you could be the smartest, coolest, funniest person inside, but as long, but if your body doesn't fit, then, you know, people don't want to be with you. I guarantee you that this person and several other people within this movement aren't attracted to obesity either. Like I've said, we've seen countless examples of that with the old, my man's so hot. He's never obese when they say that, is he? And that, of course, impacts your self-worth, how you perceive yourself. I think it's weird to get butt hurt about the type of judgments that humans make about each other when we make the same exact type of judgments. You have an opinion on what is attractive physically and what is not, so stop screwing around. And then there's also this idea of like how we treat plus size people is horrendous. It's so abusive. I mean, just go look at anyone, any plus size content creators comment section and you will see the abuse. And as you know, if you are looking for a partner, maybe you would want to avoid one that gets con you know, continuously shat on by society because you don't People could be embarrassed to be seen with somebody in public that they think society doesn't think is attractive or whatever. Sure, there might be some of that to it, but it's mostly that the person was not attracted to you. Want to be associated with that. You don't also want to be in that firing line. So on some hand, on one hand, I do get it. It's sh but I get it. And I think also how we perceive attraction to plus size people. Like we, society just, flat out disagrees that this could be true because we either say oh well they're only with that person because of money or you know they've got something over their head or they fetishize they demonize it they fetishize it going well they can only find that person attractive because they have a fat fetish well the vast majority of people aren't into that the vast majority of people are attracted to signs of health the things that we think are attractive are also signs of good health, like muscles, being in shape, and all this type of stuff. That's why it's considered an F etish to be attracted to somebody who shows no signs of visible health. I want to get with somebody who's not even going to live for 10 minutes. Like, what? No, that, that doesn't make sense from an evolutionary standpoint. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Everybody's free to be into whatever type of thing that they want. I'm just trying to explain it. So, like, it's just we've built a world where having a romantic relationship with a fat person is just demonized beyond all hell. That's not why people aren't dating fat people. It's because they're not attracted to them. I'm sorry, I know that's a hard pill to swallow, but it ain't society. You guys would be with me if you weren't afraid of what society would think of this. No, it's not that, I'm sorry. And the that is part of it, but that's really not the major part of it. If you really loved somebody and you were really into them, at some point you would be like, dude, screw society, we're gonna be together. I'm gonna hold your hand walking down the sidewalk and I don't give a damn what anybody thinks. That's love, baby.
people who suffer or or the fat people who don't get to you know have the romantic love which we have put on this pedestal <laughs> you don't get to have this romantic love well if we work on ourselves and we become confident and start believing in ourselves other people might become curious on what you're so damn confident about and it might make them want to be with you or inquire further the ultimate goal of all of our lives you know it's well i'm sorry that that's been your experience but like i said physical attraction is a whole different thing just because we get along and this, that, and the other thing doesn't mean that we are romantically compatible. But like I said, I'm sorry that's been your experience and I know it's a hard pill to swallow to just be like, yeah, um, a lot of people aren't into people living in a larger body. If we want other people to love us, we have to start by loving ourselves. And how do we love ourselves? By subscribing to this channel. By taking good care of ourselves, not just mentally, but physically. A human being is a complete package, not just mentally. We don't throw our physical health out the window at the behest of our mental state because in the end we'll have a worse mental state when we can't move our body anymore. And also exercise and eating healthy is good for your brain and good for your mental state. So what do you think of the clips that we just saw? Is William correct that 97% of diets fail and you will gain the weight back? Also, should you never compliment your partner's weight loss because they might have done it in an unhealthy way despite the fact that we sleep in the same bed and we're together 24 hours a day? And furthermore, should we date larger people even though we're not attracted to them just because they have a dope personality? Leave a comment below. Happy Monday, everybody. Anyway, that about does it. Thanks for watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one.